to game number two between Area Saravati, playing for Area 51 Gaming, spawning as the Purple Protoss in the top left. And who is his opponent for this particular game poll? Oh, but this is the one and the only Gosu Tigan who actually won the last match. So that means if he does manage to win this game, he will continue on to the next series and fight one of our incredible players, who I will actually not spoil for everyone, <laughs> even though I really yeah, want to. <laughs> we will be getting the updated brackets out to everybody as soon as I uh, well this cast is done and we get just one or two stragglers who are currently finishing up their games we do see that uh, the pylon is going down up in the high ground for area Saravati and that's because this game is Braxis Delta this is another map created by Baron and it has if you kind of look behind the um, kind of where the pylon is going down right now a little bit to the left of that there's an in-base natural that you can take so this is a very macro oriented map and really uh favors the macro advantage as opposed to trying to go for any kind of early one base play yes indeed and real quick i believe that since we do have a little bit of time to uh before the game actually picks up let's give another shout out to our sponsors what do you say i say absolutely yes all right, so cybersports.tv, you guys should definitely check out that website, an excellent site for seeing what's going on in Sarka 2 esports community as far as tournaments and streams goes. What's the next one yes. for you? And your.pro, they are an awesome site for trying to just kind of get some games going on with other uh, interested folks in the community, and you can actually bet on your games with their credits and win pretty nice prizes. I know I, for one, would love to have a Korean yeah. StarCraft account. I would too. Oh, wait, I already have one. <laughs> also, a big shout out to Zeke.com. That is Z. 33k.com you guys have been so good to us by hosting our brackets and just been such an excellent help especially to me who had a lot of trouble getting my stream working on that website absolutely they've been just just so nice to us. I can't thank uh, Zeke enough. We also need to throw out an awesome shout out to uh, Peep Mode, the community mod created by Icolus, which is going to be, uh, or actually he contributed to the prize pool and bumped it up from 150 to 200 dollars. So that's going to be something very nice for all the players that we have, uh, just fighting it out right now. Yes, indeed, and also Genesis Web Solutions for making our overlay. Shout out to you, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so then moving back on into this game, Saravati did go for a Nexus first after planting down that pylon, and now has the gateway building and his first gas going, so for going to be going for uh, just trying to use those early uh, gateway units as his main form of defense. And Tigon, however, did build the spawning pool first and now has the hatchery building uh, at his kind of natural base and will be probably taking his third quite soon since he knows he's not going to be facing any cannon pressure. Yeah, we do see a cybernetic score being dropped down from Saravati, so he is going to go ahead and get some uh, some units as opposed to structures that we, as we have been seeing in PVZs lately where players go for that forge fast expand or just a cannon rush or something like that. So It does actually look as though uh, Saravati is going to let that one Zerg into his base. Unfortunately, the probe is definitely not able to go toe-to-toe <laughs> -to -toe with that Zerg and giving some very nice scouting information for Tikan. Able to run around, maybe pick off a probe if Saravati isn't careful. But really what it's showing Tigon right now is that my opponent is not going for a one base all-in. He does yeah. have that expansion, so I feel safe taking my third. Yeah, absolutely, and that's exactly what I was going to say. He can very easily take that third, which is actually almost finished a little bit close to three-fourths of the way finished for our Zerg player and I wouldn't be surprised to see him take a relatively quick fourth this match I'm just gonna go ahead and call that one right now <laughs> it would definitely be a good decision it's pretty easy to take additional bases on this map though once you get above about four it becomes uh, noticeably more difficult as each one is moving towards your opponent or opens you up to counterattacks in a pretty significant way Yes, indeed. So Saravati actually moving out a probe to do some scouting right now of his Zerg opponent. And let's see who he's rallied. He actually rallied over to where the fourth base would be of Zerg. So I do think that Saravati has in mind the strategies of Zerg and will most definitely adjust accordingly to the number of bases and to the unit composition, as any good player should do. Yeah, he has been playing just extremely well. I had the uh, great pleasure to watch him playing some just uh, other 
FRB games by hanging out in channel uh, 7M or FRB, depending on which Blizzard feels like shutting down right now. I'm just kidding. They don't actually shut down the channels, but sometimes <laughs> the channels do go down. But if you're interested in playing some FRB games yourself, check out channel 7M or the uh, channel FRB, and you can find more interested folks who will uh, play lots of games with you. And it's a really, really fun time. I love the people who hang out there. Yeah, and actually, I think we've been forgetting to do the biggest shout out of them all FRB community. You guys are so great. Baron, you are absolutely awesome. Thank you so much for this idea and for producing this. Just such such a good, um, I guess, a good turnout of what like the work that you guys have done. Yeah, thanks so much to everybody who has just been so supportive in uh, the concept of FRB so far. And really, everybody who's watching right now, the reason that we're putting this on is to try to bring the ideas of FRB to as many people as possible. And actually, um, I don't know if we've... We haven't reiterated the kind of point of FRB in a little while, so for all the people who are watching right now and don't currently know that, we are watching what's called a fewer resources per base map, which means that in each one of the bases, you only have six mineral patches and one high yield gas, which reduces the overall amount of money by 25%, but there are more bases available to take, so you get more spread out, need to split your army and control your units better, but can still get to some of the really cool late game compositions that we all like to see in StarCraft. Yes, indeed, and I must say that I really like this. It reminds me a lot of Brood War, where you were taking just a ton of bases all over the place. And actually, I believe it was you that was telling me about a game that was being played yesterday, where there was like something like eight bases or so. I would love to see that kind of game for um, for StarCraft 2. Yeah, I watched a game of Flash versus Free. Uh, people might know that because it has the biggest Artosis pylon basically ever. <laughs> there were like eight gateways that were being powered by it. But both players went up to about eight bases over the course of the game, and that's just totally unheard of in Ordinary StarCraft 2, which is part of why FRB has really taken off and so many people are interested in it. And indeed, in the kind of topic of more bases being taken, we do now see the fourth being thrown down by T-Gun and the third being taken by Saravati. Yes, indeed. So Saravati is actually going to lose a Zealot right there to a ton of Zerglings. Poor Zealot stood at absolutely no chance. Maybe if he was a Marine. No, <laughs> just kidding. Yeah, Marines do do pretty well with uh, Zerglings. Though, unfortunately, it looks as though when you have about uh, 17 of them or so, it's a little bit one-sided, even if you're a uh, Zealot <laughs> Marine. <laughs> getting for the best of a both worlds. The upgrades have started for both players. And actually, ooh, the Dark Shrine being dropped for Saravati right now. He's also getting Hallucination, which I don't know what he's planning on doing huh. with the Hallucination. I suspect it would be to get some kind of high ground vision so he could warp units perhaps directly into this third base, but we're going to have to see the reason for that, though. It could actually be... Uh, I don't think he has a Robo. Yes, it's because he does not have a Robo done, and so he's going to be using that primarily for scouting. Yes, indeed. I believe he'll probably go for some kind of Phoenix play here just to get a little bit of information against his Zerg opponent. And I think it's likely that he would actually use it as well to warp in some uh, some Dark Templars. Of course, it's not necessary. He can always just run them across the map if he doesn't need to. The Dark Templars are going to be very important for their ability to make Archons in just a little while. As we do see the first Mutalus hitting the field, the Spire completed just a little while ago. And T-Gun has taken down that one big p patch of destructible rocks that leads kind of into the natural-ish fourth of his opponent. And all of these Mutalus are swooping right into the natural expansion of Saravati to do some damage. Wow, Saravati losing a lot of probes right here because these Mutalus are just able to attack so easily. There's actually nothing to defend against them. Not a Forge, not anything, but four stalkers are being warped in here, and it doesn't look like the mutas are going to be forced to retreat for just the time being. Of course, he could pick up a few more probes if he wanted to. Yep, just like he's going to turn around and do that, and of course, we'll eventually be forced out once more by our Protoss player was a pretty successful little bit of harassment right there before being forced out. 11 workers killed for, in exchange for absolutely no uh, mutalisks dying. So it does look as though uh, some harassment is going to need to be very important in order to just get back into uh, a worker kind of semblance, a worker parody, um, or to at least warp in some Archons so that he can begin dealing area of effect splash damage when the mutalisks cluster up. Indeed, so we do see Saravati, of course, moving with the Dark Templar. Actually moved it to the uh, Zelnaga Watchtower, moved it to both of the Zelnaga Watchtowers. So kind of just chilling with them. Of course, it does look like these mutas are coming in here again for some more harassment. And a huge blink there by Saravati, able to pick off a couple of mutalists right there. So um, actually, a kind of a, well, I wouldn't say a big loss, but indeed a loss for our Zerg player. Does not want to be losing mutas like that. 
Yeah, it's very, very bad when that Mutalisk flock is really thinned out at all, particularly with these static defenses going up around that base. It's going to be harder and harder for the Mutalisk to get in and continue doing the harassment. That's really the main point of bringing them out at this stage of the game. We do see Overlord Speed actually being researched, probably to just uh, continue looking around for any expansions the opponent might be taking or drop creep on them so that it won't be as easy to take. And the fifth base going up in the bottom left-hand corner for Gosu Tigun. <clears throat> yes, indeed. So I, I think I might be getting the wish that I did have. Uh, I'll go back to that in a second. We do see some mutas coming up here to the uh, third base of our Protoss player, and they might be able to pick up some suckers there. Wow, that's actually really effective, and, <laughs> and a Voidway being hallucinated in for some vision. Now, what I was going to say was that I might be getting my wish in the sense that we're having one, two, three, four, five bases for a Zerg player. It might go up to eight bases. <laughs> eight bases would definitely be a pretty intense thing on this map, but I do think it's possible. Right now, the map control that Tikon has is absolutely amazing. He does not currently have control of the Watchtowers because of the Dark Templar that moved in there, though he does actually have control of the Northern one. He's just using these Mutalists to fly around and really make sure that his opponent is not taking more expansions, and this can be reflected in the supply. He's now up to 184 against just 132 of his opponents. So if Saravati is going to want to be doing a timing attack, he's going to need to make something happen soon because once Tigun maxes out and begins banking resources, it will be very hard to consistently effectively trade armies. Now we do see a tech into investors right now, so that is going to be really, really effective at keeping Blink Stalkers in position for just a little bit so Mutas can do tons of damage to them. And just look at the supplies 186, sorry, 190, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. A ton of supply, almost 200 out of 200 for our Zerg player versus the 152 of Protoss. I do think this is actually the first game that we have casted tonight where uh, one player has reached max out or mostly maxed out. So it is definitely possible. You just have to work harder for it because as we see harassment going down in the natural expansion, the huge Mutalisk Falk now up to more than a full page of 26, taking out all of those cannons almost immediately, continuing to kill off some workers now up to 18 worker kills with, and they're completely unanswered. There have been no workers killed by Saravati yet. Yes, indeed, it does look like these Zerglings are coming in here, but get huge force fields there from our Protoss player, and our Zerg really needs to chill out a second and get a better position. That was actually a lot of stuff lost right there, and let's take a look at the units lost right now. It's actually, oh my god, it's actually almost completely even. I would just go ahead and say it's completely even. Yeah, the uh, cost-effectiveness of that trade can definitely not be understated. It was a really good engagement, and the supplies have now uh, not quite equalized, but are considerably better than they were just a few moments ago. But there is an enormous attack coming in. However, with the two Archons, particularly with the plus two attack waiting there, yeah, I do think that uh, Tigon made a good decision by deciding to back out there and wait for the Hive tech that he currently has on the way and the Pathogen glands for his Infestors. Yes, sir, indeed. So it does look like Saravati making some Archons right here, who on my screen are like bugged out. They're not even moving. But okay, oh, now we have a huge attack by these Zerglings. Really nice blink there, separating a lot of the Zerglings. And of course, Gosu Tigan losing more and more units here. He needs to be careful. Of course, Zerglings aren't the biggest thing to lose, but you know, he doesn't want to get taken advantage of. And I think Saravati has decided on the timing that he wants, or, or either that or he's just moving into the middle of the map. I think he's going to go for an attack here, though. It's going to be a pretty hard attack to deal with if he does decide he wants to commit. A large group of Zerglings being lost basically for free, and now only down to 32 Zerglings against 32 actual Stalkers. So it's going uh, to be the 40 Mutalists that are currently on the field that are really the major part of Tigun's army, and he is currently moving into counterattack, trying to take down this Nexus that is uh, right in the natural expansion for Saravati. Yes, indeed. So, of course, Zerg doing an excellent job of keeping the Protoss player at bay, basically defending himself with some excellent aggression. Now, Saravati is blinking, did blink a lot of stalkers up here to the main base and manages to ward off these mutilists for the time being. Four Archons are also out on the field. Of course, now Saravati needs to pay attention to the right side of the map. Some Zerglings were going to come in here to do some run-ins, but it does look like there's tons of cannons there and basically going to keep that from happening for now. I really do like the addition of static defense because uh, when you have just generally fewer units on the field, more static defense is much more effective, though as we see now, the greater spire are actually under construction for T-Gun, and if he is able to convert into a broodlord style army, all of those static defenses will be totally useless. Yes, most definitely. So we do see eight, <coughs> sorry, eight corruptors being morphed in right now. 
undoubtedly they will be transformed into some amazing broodlords, and Saravati might really just have a hard time dealing with this. The timing for uh, swapping that way is excellent for Tegan. He's using these mutilists to go in for some harassment, oh. but is really just trying to ditch a bit of supply. Yeah, and it does look like Saravati actually lost that base. Originally, his natural expansion so so quickly to those mutas. There's so many mutas out on the field. Of course, it does look like High Templars and Stalkers aren't going to defend, but I mean, come on. Ghost of Tegan managed to kill an entire base. Really big attack by him. Yeah, though there are a lot of Zerglings currently being thrown away, though that might be a part of a deliberate plan, as we yeah. do see four Broodlords being morphed in right now with a fifth uh, being added to them. Three three upgrades are on the way, which will make those Broodlings just incredibly effective. So it'll be very important for the Blinkstalker Micro, and particularly the Storms from the High Templar, to just be perfect for dealing with that air threat. Yes, indeed. So Saravati... Oh my, he almost lost a lot of probes right there. These Mutilists are coming up here to the right side base and gonna go ahead and take out the High Templar. Really good job there. And it's just taking out so many cannons, forcing Saravati to move all over the map right now. Wow, T-Gun's mobility is just coming, it's just coming so, so great into play here. Yeah, it would be really, really nice to see Saravati begin just kind of scattering around a couple of High Templar, leave them at each one of the bases, because I've noticed that's something the hero does quite a bit. He will just warp in a couple of High Templar, let them start building up energy, and if a base starts being attacked by these huge Mutalisk swarms or a gigantic Zergling run by, he can immediately drop a storm on them and at least punish them for the damage that they're about to do to that base. Yes, indeed. So, Saravati, I really just feel like, I don't, I'm not sure what he's waiting on. Maybe he's waiting on an attack. Maybe he wants to attack with 200 out of 200. But he's basically been doing the same thing all game. Other than having more bases right now, he's been stuck in the middle, trying to defend the left side of the map and the right side of the map all at the same time. It's been so hard for him to deal with. Of course, we do see some DTs. The Stark Templar actually has six kills, and it is going for this base. Of course, an Overseer as well as some Mutalists are going to be able to easily clean that up. But that was almost that was almost a good attack there by Protoss. <laughs> Yeah, a pretty good bit of harassment, though not actually getting the base is going to be uh, a, something of a problem for him, though. He is moving out through the middle right now. I'm just worried that he's waited too long. His opponent has managed to get up a really sizable number of Broodlords at 8, and despite having no Infestors, it's going to be quite difficult for him to just blink underneath the Broodlords when they are spawning so many Broodlings. God, there are so many Broodlords that are going to be in this fight, and I'm just dreading this for our Protoss player. <clears throat> of course, I really like this composition. The Mutas are just so highly mobile and do so much damage, and then the Broodlords are a little less mobile, they're kind of slow, but the Mutas can do the harassment, whereas the Brutas just kind of keep you safe for um, until you're ready to attack. I really like it. Yeah, I do think it's being very effective so far. There is a bit of harassment going in on the bottom left, but a big attack moving in to the center base of Gosu Tigan, taking out that base quite quickly, though all of the Broodlords are moving into position, and once they start unloading their deadly payload, it's going to be very difficult for Saravati to continue pushing in here, and yeah, he is beginning to pull back, though has lost, I think, almost all of his Archons, and that third one might go down, and that's a major gas investment that he just lost in order to kill that base. Yes, indeed. So looking at the units lost, our Zerg player has lost more, but of course, I do feel like he's in the better position right now with his units. They're just so much stronger. Of course, Ghost of Tegan coming in here, taking out so many cannons with his Mutalus, just not even worrying about the fact that he's losing Mutas to these cannons. He's just destroying these static defenses and of course, forcing his Protoss player to defend even more. Though in that defense, he has warped in a Fleet Beacon and there's a Mothership just about to finish. Oh. Where is it coming from? Uh, it's it. pr pretty good storms, though. A lot of those storms also hitting his own probes, so not necessarily the best move right there. Oh, the and mothership. oh no, the mothership works in right on top of all those mutilists. It's almost instantly brought down. An enormous anti-timing for when that mothership came out, because there are a lot of Archons on the field. We could have seen the dreaded Archon toilet, which would be one of the best ways for Saravati to finish and close out this game, but unfortunately it was just not meant to be. Oh man, that is so sad. I was really hoping to see that, but of course losing that mothership is just going to be another epic blow against Saravati. And of course now we do see another engagement. Of course these mutas are running away even more and more, um, staying alive and doing a ton of damage. 
but because of the supply he's lost in having those mutilists running around, the infestors are now hitting the field. Eight of them just spawned with some more corruptors uh, also on the way. It's actually, what is the total now number? It's now up to 14 infestors with 13 broodlords in uh, tow. And so by getting this final, just kind of ultimate death ball of Zerg, it's really starting to look grim for Saravati. Unless he can get another mothership out, which he has just started, it's going to be extremely difficult for him to deal with that army head on. Yes, indeed. So we're just going to continue to wait this out to see what our Protoss player does do. I think he wants to get a stronger foothold on his economy. I think he realizes, too, that he can't really do any kind of attacks right now that are going to be effective. And actually, he is waiting uh, to build another mothership that's um, about one-fourth of the way finished right now. So once he gets that out, he might try to go for another attack. If you look at the right-hand side of the uh, map, you can see that he has had just about enough of all of those mutilist oh shenanigans. An unbelievable number of photon cannons being warped in, though because they are not actually finished yet, all of the mutilists able to come in and pick off a pretty noticeable number of them. However, they're just <laughs> immediately replaced, turning through the enormous bank that because of the awesome macro of these players, they have been able to build up. Yes, indeed. Now, it does look like Protoss is going down here to the bottom left side of the map. Going to manage to take out a hatchery, but of our, um, I'm sorry, of our Zerg player. Actually, targeting down some overlords right there, but does eventually manage to take out that hatchery. And Zerg is just so not even worried about this. Of course, these, oh my god, those High Templars got eaten up by those Broodlords. They were so defenseless right there. Now, it does look like a huge group of Broodlords is going to the top right side of the map, destroying these cannons. And oh my god, this is just so scary. Yeah, this is just such an unfortunate position for our Protoss player to be in. Where is the mothership? It's right now uh, hanging out at the um, natural, well, kind of natural, the third base of the Protoss player, and he is trying to get all of his forces together. has a whole bunch of Archons also in tow, though he's just lost that right-hand base. So he is definitely going to be behind economically and is really going to have to land the perfect vortex in order to finish off this army, though in, uh, Neural Parasite is just now finishing up along with an enormous number of Corruptors. So unless he gets in and does it soon, it's just going to be too late. Yes, indeed. So these Corruptors are moving up here as well as the Broodlords who are actually splitting up a little bit, <laughs> microing those Broodlords like Marines so that he can avoid the huge toilet that is without a doubt impending. Now it does look like we are going to have the engagement. Will it happen? Yes, indeed. Zerg is committed as well as Protoss is committed here, splitting up his units a little bit as best as he can. Of course, some fungal growths are going down. I actually can't see if they're going down or not. Oh, this is so close. Yeah, the mothership does go down, though. The fungal growths were revealing the units beneath as well, so they were just taking massive damage from the broodlords. I also love that there are a couple queens in here, so any kind of blink or focus fire play is being just completely nullified by that awesome healing ability from Transfuse. Right now, he is trying to slip out of that horrible little choke that he was stuck in as Saravati uh, is moving out his forces, though I'm not sure that T-Gun really cares at this point. No. I think he's just going to go commit and to kill his opponent. Well, that's the thing. I mean, he cannot lose any of his units. I mean, there's... So, oh my god, there's just so many Broodlords, so many Infestors. Whereas our Protoss player getting picked up a little bit apart by a spine crawlers, of course, will manage to stay alive and push into the base of our Zerg opponent. But when it comes down to it, it's going to be this army versus the Zerg's army, and I really feel like Protoss does not have the lead that he needs to get this victory. He does have a little bit of a prayer left though for that victory. He has another mothership warping in and it's at the center expansion so it might be able to escape from the like massive corruptor flock that's currently on the field though actually there's only two of them left so it would really be the infestors that he needs to worry about and if he can get that away, get enough energy for a vortex, there are currently seven archons so there's a small chance but he's losing basically all of his bases and right now uh, Tegan is just building expansions all over the map making sure that he will not be eliminated in a pure base race situation. Yes, indeed. So Saravati, of course, continuing to deal damage to as many structures as he can and take them out as best as he can, whereas T-Gun is just like, what's up? Here's some Terrans to blow up your Nexus. <laughs> Yeah, so where is that mothership? It's now floating out across the middle of the map, though because of this creep tumor, it is immediately revealed. Um, and so I do think that Tegon is going to know that that threat is currently forming. And he's now down to just one mining base. When you look at the workers, it's now 15 drones against 12 probes. So I don't think there's going to be any kind of rebuilding in this game. These two no. players are going to commit to a final battle, and one of them is going to come out on top. But 
it's looking a little bit dicey for Saravati, though he is at 80 energy, so if he can just save up for that Vortex and land it, he might yet come out on top. Yes, indeed, he might, but it's going to be so hard for him to do that. He's really going to have to dodge Fungal Growth as best as he can and get up there and land that toilet. I don't quite know what the mothership is doing. It's not floating down way to the south and it almost has enough energy. It needs to be with the army. He can just be watching his opponent's army and try to land the, and actually he now sees where his opponent's army is. He knows for a fact that it's not in a position to hunt down that mothership. So, okay, now it's moving up to the north. Stop scaring me, Saravati. I was, <laughs> I was really nervous for you for a moment there, man. Man, I'm really, really scared here for our Protoss play. Just He's going to have to get that toilet down. He's going to have to get that vortex. But he's just kind of chilling with this mothership um, instead of keeping it with his army. He needs to be careful about that. It does look like Zerg has decided to go ahead and go for the engagement. Yeah, he's moving up all of his infestors right now, along with a, a couple of overseers, just to make sure that they can see everything behind that mothership. The mothership is moving into position now. If the, oh, that army stays that close up, there might be a vortex. No, no, okay, now it's spreading out a little bit. So Saravati very smartly continuing to retreat. As the units for Zerg move forward on attack move, they will naturally cluster up and give him the small window of opportunity he might be able to use. All right, so here comes the final engagement, I do believe, and these Broodlords are just... Oh, there's the Vortex! Oh, he got so many Broodlords right there, but there's still so many left out, and oh my god, this is so scary for our Protoss player. That Vortex will be ending relatively soon here, and I don't know who's going to be able to hold on. Tegan, though, with the perfect there. response to that, he tossed down so many infested Terrans right into the middle of that, which forces the units out from the center for Protoss, so they cannot all immediately shoot and kill off those Brutalors. As we see, only one or two Archon shots went down, and what happened to that army? It dropped like a hundred supply in about five seconds. Area Saravati down to just 36 supply against the 136 of his opponent. Yes, indeed. So Saravati is left with only one... I think one base right now. Yeah, he's only got one Nexus as well as the one that is in production, but I just don't see him holding on much longer in this game. Yeah, unfortunately, despite Dark Templars it being incredibly good and Blink Stalkers as well, there's just absolutely no way that he's going to be able to harass and uh, otherwise fight his way back into the game. I would ex be expecting a GG soon, though. Uh, it looks like Right now, Saravati is definitely going for the never give up, never surrender, yeah. day nine style of uh, StarCraft 2. So he is going to just hold out as long as he can, try to get up some more bases, and potentially make something happen, though. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is just... wanting to add as much drama and excitement to the cast as I can, like... Let's kind of be honest, 30 supply against 127 is a pretty severe deficit. <laughs> Maybe he's just, uh looking at the advantage that he does have in the sense that he has four investors or I'm sorry, four harvesters versus zero harvesters over his player. Obviously Protoss can pull ahead. I mean, come on. <laughs> it's true. I mean, if he can do sufficient amounts of mining and just get his opponent to completely lose track of where this current nexus is that has just finished up, uh, he might be able to mine enough to make something happen, though. Actually, as we continue looking at the buildings, we just though actually looking around at the buildings for there might actually be a better reason for him to be staying in this because I think that there's only the one hatchery and oh, one extractor yeah. to our temple are moving in on that extractor. So if he's able to, there's uh, one, are there any more buildings? I think the question is, where are the corrupt? Yeah, there are overseers. So, I mean, if Tegan can find these DTs, he's definitely going to shut down the threat um, of Tegan surviving. But wait, okay, so there's the one hatchery. I don't uh, see any other buildings. No. This might actually still be uh, anybody's game. What's going to happen to that hatcher is no. his last building. I don't I'm know. Uh, I'm just desperately looking around the map. Where is it? Where is it? What's, okay. what's going on here? Was that? We're trying to find this, guys. Try to play Where's Waldo with us. I only see Pink. Overlook. Does is someone in the error? audience is see this it? game not? There's no way. If it doesn't end, I'll be so disappointed. If like I can't see it, we oh wow, this might be something for us to take another look at because Saravati might officially have this game. I'm just looking around the map and um, I'm swapping over to chat. Actually, does anybody in chat spot where that last building is? Yeah, look at the buildings tab. I would <laughs> love to comic. Um, I don't know where it is. I wonder if there might be a small bug in this current map that 
Oh. When you're like fully out of buildings, because that just generally doesn't happen. He right now is rebuilding his hatchery, but for a long time I saw no buildings on the field for Gosu T Gun, so we will need to take another look at this replay. I after think the broadcast is over. I think that that hatchery has actually been up for a long time. Um, because that's where Zerg was. Okay, Tegan's yeah, talking about it right now. He says there's a spine crawler. There's a spine crawler with his queens. That's what it was. Okay. Where is it? Oh, oh, he was moving around a mobile spine crawler. What? All right. <laughs> Sorry, Tegan. <laughs> oh my God, that is unbelievable. I have never even thought about that happening in any game of StarCraft Two. Yeah, so obviously Protoss was probably just as confused as we were. <laughs> Sorry, t know, can... We We, of course, were not accusing you of cheating by any means, so please don't be offended by that. We were just very yeah, curious. Anybody, there's, there was absolutely no way that anybody was cheating for this game. If anything, it would have been a bug. And it's looking actually even now like it was just unbelievable yeah. goes to game sense by t making sure that he had one mobile structure with him. And because really mobile structures are only ever the purview of Terran, I don't think that me or Saravati or anybody else would have even thought of Zerg having the mobile structure with their army. Yeah, there's no way I would never have thought about that, obviously, because I couldn't figure it out. So, I mean, Tegan just being so smart right there, doing such a good job. And these couple of uh, Blink Stalkers moving around, they really want to go in and try and make a go at sniping that base, but there's no way. And I do think that, unfortunately, this will be the last structure for Saravati on the field. It's now currently being sieged oh. by Brutal. Uh, no. <laughs> no, I was just going to say the stalkers are trying to move in here and get a snipe, but that is the GG. GG, well played. Good luck for the rest of FRB. Alright guys, well thanks for tuning into that one. And I do believe we have some more games coming up, so please don't go away. Yes, we're going to have our uh, next and final series for the night. However, uh, right now we're going to do some kind of community question and answer. So anybody who wants to uh, just kind of toss out some questions into the chat, I'll be happy to, uh, or actually we, I should say, will be happy to hop in and talk to you guys right now.